Um, I just would like to start out by saying, by asking you a question. So two people go to the Green Social Club and they hear the same lectures, but one person grows from hearing the guest speakers and the other person not so much. So the question is, why would one person grow and eventually be able to change? And why would the other person not be, not be affected as much? And the answer is that the first person has the ability to see their personal garbage or their ego or whatever it is within themselves that they need to change. And um, about a year ago when I first decided to make this lifestyle change in regards to nutrition and cleansing and detoxing the body, I was overwhelmed and I would put a lot of pressure on myself. So I decided one day I was sitting at my desk and to write out the numbers 24 to 120. I literally wrote out in columns the numbers 24 to 120 and I hung that piece of paper right above my makeup and every day for a year since then I've I've dressed, I've showered, and then I open up my makeup cabinet and I see those numbers, 24 to 120. 120 being, hopefully I live to that age. And so it kind of takes the pressure off the process of changing. Because if you think that you have so many decades to have so many baby steps to make that change, you're like, wow, it's, it's not going to be that difficult. And so tonight, I'd like to introduce the first guest speaker, author and clinical nutritionist, Natalia Rose. She has an amazing website, and she has written four books on cleansing and detoxing the body. Tonight, Natalia is going to talk to you about preconception cleansing and share with you. She is, Natalia is living proof that this process works. She has two beautiful children, and they are healthy and happy. So please introduce, please welcome Natalia Rose. Thank you, Mary. Beautifully said, as always. I actually forgot what I was going to say just because I was so engrossed in what you were saying. But um, first, let's get a show of hands of how many of you are planning on preparing your bodies for pregnancy. And how many of you already have babies of whatever age? Yes, I <laughs> see you there. Okay, good, good. All right, so tonight we thought we'd break down. There's so much information from conception to pregnancy to postpartum, nursing, early childhood development. All of these things are so important to cover. We can't possibly cover them all in one night. So what we decided to do was break them down into about a four or five part series, starting tonight with preconception. And so we're going to just focus on preconception, or I should say, yeah, preconception, and not go into the other aspects of pregnancy and, um, and nursing and, and postpartum tonight, because it will just really confuse everyone. But if we can get the fundamentals down, we get this foundation really, really um, strongly in place, then the other things will flow naturally. Okay? Um, now, the way I want to approach this is first to explain why preconception cleansing is so essential, and then we'll discuss how easy and fun, simple it can be. This doesn't need to be torture. This shouldn't be a prison sentence. This should be a, a wonderful experience that brings joy to you and, and, and the offspring. Okay? So, um, so why is preconception cleansing so essential? And let me just <laughs> sidetrack for a second and say, if, you haven't, if you've had children and you haven't done any preconception cleansing, don't freak out. This is not about that. But I do want to emphasize what, what it can do to benefit the offspring if it's put in place. So those of you who have the time to do it before you get pregnant, it's extremely valuable. And let me explain why. You may have noticed that our children, adults, I should say teenagers through young adults, are getting sicker and heavier much younger. The people that are coming in to see me in my practice who are in their early 20s, late teens sometimes, are suffering from the same conditions that people in their 50s have joint problems, terrible rheumatism, all kinds of issues that you should never see in a teenager and in someone, you know, at 20. You shouldn't even see them, in, you know, in someone at 50. But they're manifesting earlier and earlier. 
Why? Because when the sperm and the egg got together to, to produce them, that sperm and that egg got compromised blood chemistry. Because with each generation, the blood chemistry, it, it becomes inferior with each generation. So if you take two healthy humans, say, you know, let's just say Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, whether or not that ever existed. Um, you take two healthy humans living in a healthy, fresh air, clean soil, living on, on good fruits and vegetables, and, um, and drinking clean water. Their electromagnetic current is going to be completely healthy. Their, their cells are going to be perfect. There's not going to be any issue. But when you start throwing things that are not meant for the human body into the human body, the cellular structure actually starts to mutate. The DNA starts to shift. And in the beginning, in the first, you know, however many hundreds of generations, it's not so bad because the stuff that's going in isn't so bad. You know, if we're talking about a little bit of, you know, of cows grazing in, uh, you know, on, on, on healthy pastures, drinking raw cow's milk, having bits of fish, bits of fresh eggs, getting, well, meanwhile, getting all that fresh air, it's not going to compromise the DNA in the cells quite so much as it will when you throw the post-industrialization into the mix. So going from living on, farm, on the farmland in, you know, in Russia to being born of parents who, have, who came to America and have been living the American lifestyle, it's a huge leap. And this is why it's so dire right now. It's not a luxury. It's not something that you do because you think, well, you're going to be you know, giving your kids a little leg up doing this. No, you're going to give them a huge leg up. It's essential. If you, you know, we talk about health insurance and, and um, keeping your kids you know, free of illnesses and by taking them to the doctor or um, keeping their diet healthy when they're young. That ha has nothing on the health insurance and the, the health preparation, the, pre the prevention of illness that can be done before the sperm meets the egg. Because that sperm and that egg are a product of the blood chemistry at the moment of conception. Which also means that this is not just for women, this is for men too. Let's just take a, a look at an analogy here. Um, you know, it's very similar to soil and seed. Okay, if you're a farmer, you're not going to, you know, prepare your soil and have this beautiful fertile land and then not care what seeds you put in it. Just, you know, think, well, it's any old seed, let's just plant it, right? By the same token, if you're a farmer, you're not going to get your glorious, beautiful seed and plant it into soil that is infertile, right? Both things need to be in place for this to happen. No surprise that infertility is one of the, the leading issues right now among, you know, among women and, well, and men trying to conceive, well, <laughs> among uh, health issues in general. So we really need to look at this seriously and, um, and realize that if we're, if we're not producing healthy offspring, if our kids, you know, it, I'm, I'm saying sort of, you know, in, in mass, if our kids are not successful in, in terms of health, if there's, um, you know, if there's ADD, if there's malformations, things that break our hearts to look at, that's not happening randomly. This isn't like a throw the dice and see, maybe you get a six, maybe you get a 12. No, 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 no. This is conscious or un unconscious consumption of things that aren't fit for the human body that are manifesting to show us how unfit they are in the offspring. So it's actually, in your position, really exciting to have the chance to prevent these things as, as much as humanly possible. And so now that we've established why it's so important, let's talk about how easy and fun it can be, because it's a really heavy subject, but it doesn't have to be that heavy. OK? Everybody with me so far? OK, good. good. OK, so when we embrace a cleansing program, we never want to just dive in full throttle from the old ways of eating to, you know, say raw foods or all vegan or any kind of label you want to put on it. It's, it's about transitioning from where you were before. So if you were living on McDonald's or living on, you know, steaks and, you know, all kinds of mainstream food, you don't ever want to just say, okay, well, today I'm going to change everything. What you want to do is, is make what I call a gracious, intelligent transition. And that means that you want to include a lot of, um, yeah, good. I see people getting their pads and papers out. Good. There's going to be a lot of information here to take down. So we want, we want to realize where we've come from, and then we want to see where we're going, and then create a bridge to take us from the one end to the next. And that's what makes this process really fun. You know, that, that we should have clean cells and be eating clean food. We know that. But 
if we were to, to, to go, go on to a full-scale, pure, raw, raw vegetable regimen right away, fruits, vegetables, these things are cleansers, and they awaken, 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 all kinds of the rubbish that have been sitting in our cells for so long. And when that awakens, it can feel pretty terrible, especially if it doesn't leave the body. And that's, that's a little bit of a, another subject. But the great thing about preconception cleansing is that no one can give you any grief about what you're doing to your body, because most people don't think it matters what you do before you get pregnant. They think it only matters what you do when you're pregnant. So you won't have the mother-in-law saying, you know, you shouldn't be eating, you need to be eating more, or you, you shouldn't be doing that. It's, it's a time of freedom from prying eyes, from criticism, from anything that could possibly infiltrate your realm. You can just say, you know, no, nobody's going to be worried if you're not pregnant yet. So this is the time to, on one hand, go full throttle, but on the other hand, know that your full throttle shouldn't be, you know, Adam and Eve's full throttle, <laughs> okay? So when we talk about transition, a couple of things to keep in mind. The first thing is we're just upgrading the quality of the food that you're eating before. So, you know, as I said before, if you're, if you're eating, you know, American nonsense, mainstream food, then gently transition away from that by increasing the quality. So, for example, if you, um, if you like bread, we don't do wheat, white bread and we don't do regular wheat bread, but we can do sprouted grain bread. Sprouted grain bread goes to the body a lot faster. So you don't have to give up bread entirely, but do the sprouted grain variety. And there's a brand I like in particular called Alvarado Street Bakery, A-L-V-A-R-A-D-O, Alvarado Street Bakery, and that's at most health food stores in the refrigerated section. And they have not only breads, but bagels and tortillas. And um, Ezekiel, which is a sprouted grain bread company, has English muffins. I actually brought some stuff to show you guys. It's, it's really fun, delicious stuff. This isn't, um, yeah, let's, let's <laughs> get some of this out. Yeah, so this is, and you guys, I'll leave, this, I'll leave this all out so you can come have a look at it later. But, um, but you'll see there's delicious breads, there's um, bagels and... You know, so if you were to have a salad with a bagel and organic butter, it's, you know, cleansing doesn't have to be that painful. These are Gillis Gourmet yellow corn chips. They're just made from corn and they're baked. You know, there's, there's chips, there's cookies, there's chocolate, there's crackers. All the things that you need to make the transition easy, they're there. And they, they're what I like to call quick exit foods. So the quickest exit foods are, of course, <laughs> thanks very much, are, of course, going to be the, um, the fruits and vegetables and their juices and um, young coconuts, and young coconut milk, and that sort of thing. But then there are things that if you eat them in the right, what I call, in the right combinations, they make a quick exit from the body anyway. So for example, I wouldn't have the, the sprouted grain bread with chicken, because that would be really tough on the body to digest. But if you were to have the salad with the sprouted grain bread, and a little bit of organic butter, and raw honey, that sort of thing, would move through the body very quickly. So what it all comes down to is, how can we put things in our body that satisfy us, but at the same time, upgrade our blood chemistry. That's the magic quotient there. So there's, you know, in, instead of milk, there's almond milk, because milk, as we know, is very, very glue-forming. And if you want something sweet, there's pure maple syrup, there's stevia, um, raw honey. And there's so many things to choose from. If you're a beginner, you're just going to be blown away by what you might not have realized was ever out there. And, um, and you'll watch your body just move into a completely new state. And, um, you know, one of the things that women worry about when they think about getting pregnant is the weight that can come on with that. That doesn't have to happen. If you prepare your body before pregnancy and, and you maintain what we'll talk about next time um, throughout the pregnancy, there is no reason that you shouldn't have a better body after pregnancy than you had before. So don't ever be scared off from having children because of that. That's only the old mainstream ideas. If you eat mainstream America, yes, you're going to be heavier after you have kids. Yes, you're going to have illnesses. Yes, you're going to be in the doctor's office with your kids. But if you do this, you can avoid all that in large part, and depending on how far you go in total. All right, so um, in terms of the foods, let's go back to food combining for a second because it's really helpful. What we want to do when we cleanse is first we want to transition, so we want to know that we don't want to cleanse too quickly. And secondly, we want to give our systems a rest. The more our bodies can rest from the tasks of metabolizing substances, the more that energy can go towards healing and turning over new cells and cleaning the blood. So metabolization is a funny thing. Um, I say metabolization because people think that you have this metabolism. There is no doctor in the world that can point to your metabolism. Okay? There is metabolization, and that basically means the intake, breakdown, and elimination of substances. 
So when too much is going in for the metabolization process to keep up with, it's like an assembly line that's gone amok. So you have, you know, the, the, all the cells and the, the organs are trying to do their thing, but there's an overload, and they just start spewing it everywhere. They don't know where to put it. And, you know, it's kind of like you know, the I Love Lucy episode where Ethel and Lucy are doing the chocolates, and the, the assembly line goes berserk. It's kind of like that. So your body is try constantly trying to adapt to that. And in so doing, it's making you older, it's, it's deteriorating your blood chemistry, your DNA, which is going to be given to your offspring. So, um, so this, is, this is what we want to accomplish with, um, with the clean eating and food combining, which is combining foods in, in a certain way to make it pass through the body more easily, will give your body a rest that you wouldn't have if you were miscombining. Miscombining would be, say, again, mi mixing the, the bread with the chicken, the, the grain with the flesh. And when you miscombine, it takes about eight hours to break down that meal in the stomach. That's eight hours of sitting. You know how you feel after lunch or after dinner when you had a big meal, after Thanksgiving dinner? Well, basically everybody eats Thanksgiving dinner every day. It's just in different foods. But it's, it's this, these combinations that are completely, the body just has no idea how to process it. So it just sits. And as it sits, it ferments. The longer it ferments, at 98.6 degrees, the more likely it is to putrefy, feed bad bacteria, which are going to feed fungus and yeast. And, you know, it's all downhill from there. This is our aging. This is all the things that deteriorate us. It doesn't have to happen. But the more we can simplify our food combinations, you'll, you won't believe. If, 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 none, if, if there's anyone out there who hasn't practiced food combining, you will be blown away by how effective it is. Anyone who's struggled to lose that extra weight or have more energy in the afternoon or just have better skin, food combining is like a silver bullet solution. It's the, it's the one single thing that anyone who's trying to lose weight should do, and they'll lose weight in a heartbeat. It's so easy. But basically what it means is that we don't want to mix certain foods with other foods. I've mentioned starches with flesh. So, for example, anything that's a flesh, like a chicken, uh, fish, steak, eggs, cheese falls under the flesh category, you know, any kind of deli meats, which you guys would never do, I know, um, would fall under that category. And then in terms of starches, it's all the grains, all the um, pastas, breads, cookies, um, what am I missing here? Bagels, flour, yeah. Anything made from grains. And also root vegetables, uh, I should say winter, winter squashes, winter root vegetables, starchy root vegetables like um, uh, butternut squash, pumpkin, yams, sweet potatoes. Um, am I missing anything? I said pumpkin. No. Um, so those things would be categorized as a, as a starch. And avocado falls into the starch category, too. So those things don't combine, but they also shouldn't be combined with things like nuts and, and dried fruits, because nuts and dried fruits have a, um, a digestion all of their own. Basically, the starches require an alkaline medium to be digested, and the, um, and the fleshes require hydro hydrochloric acid. So when the hydrochloric acid meets the alkaline medium, they neutralize each other and it just sits, as opposed to, you know, we mentioned eight hours for a miscombined meal, it's about three to four hours for a properly combined meal. So you can see the difference. You'll feel the difference. Your body will thank you. So that's one of the tools we use to, um, to help the body cleanse, resting the body through proper combinations of foods and an upgraded quality of foods. And then we want to alkalinize the body and pour oxygen-rich, hydrating foods into the body. That's what's really going to help clean the blood. So the, the cleansing of the blood comes down to alkalinization and oxygenation from the highest quality uh, plant food and removal of the old substances that have, been, that have accumulated in the body. So when those two things take place, you just <laughs> soar. And we, the, in terms of alkaline foods, the best thing to alkalinize the body is pure vegetable juice. And, um, and that's something that's so easy and fun to integrate. It's delicious. You can make whatever combination you want, really. But the idea is to make it predominantly green and then to use things like carrots and beets, lemons, apples, ginger, those things to make it taste better. But the, the goal is to get the chlorophyll, the, you know, the, the synthesized sunlight, into the body. And that's so brilliant. So, you know, play around with it. If you want to keep it really simple and, and sort of, um, you know, just, just wade into the water, then something as simple as a carrot romaine juice would be great. One part uh, carrot juice, one part romaine juice if you want to be more sort of um, advanced and create a more medicinal drink, but only if you're clean enough for it. Um, you could do mostly greens with a little lemon, maybe a little apple. And um, is that Doug back there? No. Is Doug? There you are. There you are. Okay. <laughs> and if, if you want to get the best vegetable juice in the world, 
there's, um, there's Liquiteria, which my friend Doug in the back is, um, is the owner of, and it is the most splendiferous juice you ever want to get your hands on. And that's on um, 2nd Avenue and 11th Street. Oh, oh, lucky everyone. Oh my gosh, yeah, well, you can see. You can see for yourself. Um, all right then, so, um, so we're going to flood the body with, um, with alkalinity and oxygen, and we're going to remove the rubbish that's accumulated. And, um, and this is a biggie, because people don't want to talk about removing the rubbish. They want to talk about, well, what can I eat to make me healthier? What can I put in my body to make me better? The fact is, the, what you, you can't put something in to make better something that, you, you, that is causing an obstruction in the body. You can only remove the obstruction. Do you see the logic in that? Let's go back to that. You cannot put something in the body that is going to make the body better if it was caused by obstruction. That obstruction needs to leave the body. If you have a splinter in your finger, you can't put something on your finger to make the splinter go away or to stop the, the bacteria and the, um, you know, that's growing in your finger. You actually have to remove the splinter. So we have to remove the splinter of accumulation. And that does entail colonics and enemas. And much as I hate to be the messenger on this, if there was a better way, I've been doing this for so many years, I promise you I would be promoting it. I wish there was another way, you know, but there's not. We have to, we have to just accept the fact that we, have, that we have this one, well, I should say, we should be delighted that there actually is an option. Because really, have any of you seen the movie WALL-E? Or how many of you have seen the movie WALL-E? Okay, we are WALL-E. That is where we're going. You know, we see, we see these, um, these um, movies that, uh, that portray the future. And there's like um, Tom Cruise and, and Angelina Jolie, and they're all looking like absolutely fabulous in their, um, you know, fast cars and their the airplanes that do, do all kinds of crazy things, like all these techno gizmos. That's not the future. They might have techno, techno gizmos, but they're going to be like this, and our planet is going to be finished. So, it, it's, if uh, I forget my train of thought there, but basically, this is <laughs> what's that? Oh, yes. So, so we should be so grateful that there is something, thank you, that can get us out of this dire situation. Because if, if there wasn't, you know, and I do predict that at some point in the next 10 years, there will be an, a surge of, um, of colonics being put into to private bathrooms. I think it's going to be the new thing in bathrooms. Because there's no other way out. And I, again, I wish there was something else I could say that you could, you know, say, great, great, I can just take this pill. You can't. All these products in the, um, in the health food stores, that say they're going to cleanse you, the, um, you know, the, the, the psyllium and the bentonite, that's all great, but that's not going to work unless you have a colonic to pull it out. Otherwise, it's going to have a detrimental effect. So, yes, yeah, so what are colonics? Everyone's thinking, oh, colonoscopy? I don't want one of those. No, it's not a colonoscopy. Um, basically, it's, it's, it's gentle hydration of the, of the large intestine. And, um, and if, you, if you have the luxury of going to somebody like Cassie, <laughs> then it's, um, it's, a, it's a really great experience. Um, so basically, in New York City, if you guys are in New York City, it's, um, it's easy because you have the best colon therapist in the world. But it's just, just literally water going up the large intestine and carrying the waste matter out. It's very gentle. There's no pressure used. It's not a pressurized colonic, which I would avoid. Definitely don't do pressurized colonics. But gravity colonics are the way to go. If I didn't, I suppose I said that backwards. Do gravity colonics, not pressurized colonics. Mm. Um, but so basically, don't be fooled by anything, any product, it's so easy to walk into a health food store and see something that has the word cleanse on it. It's false advertising. It's not a cleanse unless it leaves the body. You guys got that? A cleanse is not a cleanse until it leaves. So you can awaken all you want with the, the, you know, the fast and the, the, you know, the diet. You can take you know, psyllium and bentonite, and you can awaken a lot of this waste. But it ha you haven't experienced a cleanse until that waste that you've awakened has actually left the body. Okay. Um, that's a really good question. It's, it's very personal for everybody. I would say um, go for a few and see how you feel. And as long as you're feeling better, keep going. <laughs> because, the, I mean, it, the, the accumulation is so deep in the tissue. We talked a little bit about accumulation last time. How many of you were here last time? Last month? Okay. Um, I mean, I can almost revisit it slightly, but um, basically everything, remember we talked about the foods that were not fit for the human body, all of that that goes into the body over the years, it accumulates in, basically in the digestive tract, and then because when the, when, the, when the digestive tract gets so full, it has no place to go, but the body tries to keep its center clear. So it pushes that waste matter into the walls of the intestine. And those walls are really thick. They're thick like a sponge, and they're, they have lots of layers in them, I should say, like a sponge. And, um, and they can hold a lot of matter. But once that matter gets, once, once the tissues 
of the intestine get full, then that waste actually gets pushed into the body at large. So what happens is with each colonic, or I should say with each week or you know, each period that you, you practice the diet, you awaken. So you awaken with the foods you eat, the vegetable juices. They awaken the matter, and then the colonic pulls it out. So with each colonic, you're having this great exodus of the accumulation that would be your future illness, your future weight, your future Parkinson's disease. <laughs> so that's, that's the benefit of the colonics. And you just keep on, I mean, this is, this is a good question. Um, you don't ever, this is another reason why it's important to do all these things before you get pregnant, because you can't do colonics when you get pregnant unless you've been doing them for a significant amount of time before you get pregnant. Your body should never, you should never expose yourself to anything during pregnancy that your body wasn't very comfortable doing before pregnancy. You know, your doctors will tell you don't take up a new exercise, don't take up colonics either. But, you know, if you're a seasoned coloniker, <laughs> then, then you can do it. Um, I mean, I did them throughout my pregnancies, but, um, you know, there was a one point when I said, you know what, okay, that's enough, that's my last one until after I've had the baby. So, um, you know, play that by ear. But just know that, you know, whether, whether you do it or not, know that it's, it's really not a cleanse unless you've had the waste leave. And some of you have great bowels, and you will push this stuff out like crazy, and others of you are, have been constipated for ages. And, you know, without the help of this, you put all those fresh juices and raw salads into your body, and you'll start to bloat, and you'll feel terrible, and you'll, get, you'll have, you know, bouts of depression and headaches that can be completely avoided. That's just the detoxification response. But the detoxification is only going to be painful as long as the waste is trying to push its way out of the body and can't find an exit. See? So again, this is kind of radical. It's, it's stuff that I, you know, I wish was easier. But I want to give you guys the truth. I don't want to sugarcoat this because you're here for a specific reason. You're part of the elevation of our, you know, of our ev evolution, of our human evolution. You're here because you're actually taking, making a conscious effort to bring offspring into the world that are going to, you know, be of, of they're going to have a good life and, and can contribute to society. So you need to know the truth because you guys are ready for it. It's like, what's that movie? Um, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> you can handle the truth, so I'm going to give it to you. All right. Um, okay, any questions so far? Yes, you would, you would not want to have a colonic if you haven't been cleansing. Nothing will come out. The, 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 um, the vegetable juices and the, and the vegetable fiber and the, the enzymes, the alkalinity, awaken the waste. And then the colonic takes it out. People, that's, that's why doctors will often say, well, nothing happens. Because mainstreamers going for colonics, nothing does happen. Mm. Yeah, a good, a good week, um, at least a week. And then, you know, you want to make sure you're awakening enough. But for most people, a week is a good amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. It's not necessary, but it's, you know, there are a lot of people. Some people do coffee, peroxide, chlorophyll. There are different uh, methods, but um, it can help stir things up. I, I have had the chlorophyll done. Um, I prefer the peroxide when it's done properly. Obviously, peroxide is quite dangerous, so you'd have to use it properly. But... Um, but it can. It can help stimulate. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Sure. Okay. So the gravity colonic is in a tank, it's, um, it's a tank about three feet above where you're laying down. You're laying flat on your left side, and then you move on to your right side, on, but you're laying on, a, on a, basically a table, a long table. And it's kind of like a massage table. And, um, and with the, the gravity unit, it's above your head. With the pressurized unit, it's, at, it's level with you. And the water gets pushed into you as opposed to gravity just gently pulling it down through a tube. It's, yeah, it's quite different. Mm. Mm-hmm. With...
Okay, but we don't want to start colonics when we're pregnant. And that's... Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the thing is that if you're a seasoned colonic person, you're no longer living in the mainstream box of falsehood. So if, you've, if you have done colonics for a year and you've done your preconception cleansing, you're not going to have the same issues physiologically that a mainstream woman would have. So I would never suggest that a mainstream woman go for colonics, especially during pregnancy. Eat, you know, a seasoned colon someone who's lived this lifestyle is so far out of that box. And I, it, what I'd, I'd like to emphasize here, what you bring up is a very important point. Don't have a short memory with this. If you've cleansed, if you think you've cleansed for three months, you haven't cleansed a smidgen. I mean, I, I, I only say that because it's really important for you to understand that the accumulation is so deep well, you may be cleansed a smidgen. But don't have a short memory. This stuff took years to accumulate in your body. You're not suddenly going to be clean in three months. But you're going to be so much further along, and if you get pregnant three months after you've been cleansing, your baby's going to be that much better off. But don't think that, oh, I've been doing this for a little while, and now I'm, I can just you know, act like a, a raw vegan and you know, live on vegetable juices and colonics. You know, no, that's, that's years into it. But I'm glad you brought that up, because that's very important. Mm. Um, well, it's not, we don't, you don't really lose a lot of fluid, you lose a lot of matter. The fluid goes in, soaks up the matter, and then pulls it out. And, you know, that can be many, many feet of, of you know, fecal waste, yucky stuff. <laughs> but um, in terms of fluid, I don't know, Cassie, there's not a clue. Yeah, you're not losing fluid with colonics. Mm. Yeah, in fact, you kind of walk away sometimes with a little too much of it, you know, not, well, not if it's done properly, but sometimes it can only, it would only go the other way. You would never be depleted. You'd only wind up with maybe a, you know, a fraction more than you'd like. Mm. Otherwise, it's living in a septic tank. Yeah. Um, and that's what we want to do. We want to prevent our babies from living in septic tanks, which is why this is so. If we do this work now before we get pregnant, again, we're just talking about conception now. If that can be Im implemented, then you're not going to have a lot of the same issues that women have when they get pregnant. It, you avoid, I mean, it's all, all the illnesses are due to the accumulation of waste matter. If you get rid of the, of the blockage, the accumulation, you're not going to have the issues. If everything's flowing correctly, there sh there's no reason anyone shouldn't be well or feel tremendous during their pregnancy. Hmm. So any other questions with that? No. Okay. All right. So we're resting the body through proper combinations of foods. We're hydrating the body and alkalinizing it with the fresh vegetable juices and, and salads. And, um, and then, then we're going to use these things, even, you know, let me just kind of go through them a little bit more with you, to make the, make the diet more fun, to make, I should say, the, the lifestyle more fun. Because this isn't something that you just obviously do to... Um, you know, to go back living the old way <laughs> later. If, you know, you're setting the stage now. The reason this is, I, I admire you guys so much for doing this, is because most women today think in terms of, let me diet just for an event or something. This is, you're actually setting the stage for the whole future of your child's life. And each, each block, uh, each stage, even though there's a, um, it's a unified whole, uh, conception, pregnancy, nursing, childhood, it's, it's all one. 
but we're breaking it down and in that let's notice that each one is a direct result of the one that preceded it the natural law of cause and effect is at play here and and that's what we need to remember always we're setting up a cause to create a beneficial effect and so the pregnancy is going to be an effect of the cause of preconception see that and the 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 early babyhood, the nursing, is going to be a result, and the, and the quality of, you know, of, of that stage is going to be a result of the pregnancy, and so on and so on and so on. And so when you wind up with a 16-year-old who's suicidal and doing drugs, that didn't just pop out <laughs> like that. That happened. That was there. It, the seeds of that were there at preconception. And that's, that's remarkable, of course, because if you take two parents who are so socially conditioned to all the things that are like deteriorating, and they're eating that way, living that way, con communing with others in a certain way, that kid's going to be six, at 16 is going to feel like it doesn't understand itself as a human being. It doesn't understand its place in the world because the truth of the human being is not the same as, is, is what people, it's not the same as the social conditioning that it's been raised in. So it's so confused at that point, it's this last ditch effort before adulthood to say, this to all the all the the grown-ups out there and you know we got that in video yikes <laughs> but basically that's 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 what's going on and so if but if, if we this is why it's not just about diet yes let's cleanse ourselves let's increase our improve our blood chemistry but equal to that is we need to change our thoughts we need to, to, to look at our environment we need to think about how what are our values and we might think our values are good we might have like the, the Christian Judaic ethic going on and think that that's all we need it's not all we need because that's not always good I mean it's it, it maybe in the synagogues and the churches it's, it sounds good but take that home how are people treating each other this is what you're gonna bring your child into you know we have to think about what kind of um, what we're really going to offer our children? Are they just an accessory? Are they something that we need to have in order to be socially accepted? Is it something your mother-in-law wants you to have? Is it something you know your your spouse wants, or do you genuinely want to create something that's going to have pleasure in on on the planet? And that's really the best thing you can offer a child, just to say, look, you get to live and you get to live well. And how cool is this? Not are you going to get into Harvard? Is preschool planned? You know, did, is the pottery barn crib arrived? I mean, that, but that's where people's minds are. So that's why I mean it was sown, the seeds were sown in the very early days of preconception because if that's where the parents' minds are, cause and effect, they're gonna, we're going to reap what we sow here. So we really have to change that. And in, in doing that, in changing our, our mental attitudes and eradicating the, um, the bad energy that we have you know, going into certain relationships or that we're receiving from certain relationships, maybe from our jobs, maybe things that we, you know, we don't believe in anymore that we're ready to shed, the more we release those things, our blood chemistry is going to, to be affected by that too. So when you conceive your baby, it's receiving the physical aspects of the blood chemistry at conception, but it's also going to get where the parents' minds, their hearts, their vision, their, their values, they're going to receive all of that too. So that's really important. Let's not forget it. Okay, so I'll just kind of open things up for questions now. I think we've covered the biggies. Um, and again, just remembering that all this is for preconception, not for pregnancy. All the cleansing, you can do it at, at, at you know, full scale magnitude if you want to, as long as, you're, as long as it's before pregnancy, but take into consideration where you've been. You know, don't start eating a raw vegetable diet if you were eating mainstream yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm glad. I'd like to do that. Let's actually do this. Um, let's do a list of go foods and a list of no foods. How's that? Okay. So, um, okay, yeah, and the, okay, the website is detoxtheworld.com. Um, this is like a step-by-step -step of what you might have detoxtheworld.com. Ambitious, I know, but you all will join and help me, right? <laughs> okay, so, um, all right, so let's start with the go foods. Um, and those, if we're talking about starches, again, it's your sprouted grains, it's your um, millet, quinoa, buckwheat, high quality grains. If you want to do pastas, you can do, I actually brought some pasta tonight. Um, Vita Spelt is an excellent brand of pasta. You guys can come up here and look at this if you want to later. 
But, um, and let's see, there's um, Kamut pasta. There's a brand called Eden Foods that makes a delicious Kamut pasta. Um, the spelt and Kamut are ancient grains. They're easier to digest. And there's, there's just a hierarchy of grains. And in that hierarchy, you'll find millet, quinoa, buckwheat at the top, and then Kamut and spelt. And then you'll have regular wheat and other grains following that. Um, and, you know, and there's so many products made from these high-quality grains that there's no need to, you know, to have the white products anymore, and there's no need to skip it out entirely because it's there. You know, you can have spelt penne with goat's cheese on top and a delicious marinara sauce, and that's a radically safer, high, more high-quality meal than having a regular pasta. And, you know, that in, in no way would that obstruct your journey if you're, you know, as you're transitioning. So, yeah. Brown rice, um, you know, it's a little gluey, but it's not, it's not horrid, but it's, you know, it's not the best grain. But it's, if you, could, if you properly combine brown rice, you're not going to get into much trouble. But, yeah. Um, women do have an issue these days with being over-yeasted more than ever before because even in the last five years, the radiation, the computer screens, the, um, just the way we live is so much more acidic than it ever was before, and it's becoming exponentially more acidic on our planet with every year, with every day. And so, whereas in the past, I didn't have to um, emphasize a yeast-free or a yeast-specific diet for women so much, I really do today. I find that almost everyone that walks through my doors is, you know, is yeasted to some degree that needs attention. And that basically means that the system becomes so acidic, you'll notice if you've had lots of UTIs, um, you know, frequent colds and flus, if you've been on lots of medication, if you've taken birth control for a long time, your system will become very acidic, and especially if you spend a lot of time indoors, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, um, you know, office jobs, in front of computer screens, I think I said that. <laughs> but basically, th these are all things that we're meant to be in an alkaline environment. Pure air, fresh water, that's alkalinity. The, um, the computer screens, the, the enclosed spaces, that all creates an acidic environment. And the more acidic the body becomes, the more inclined the body will be to, um, to grow excess amounts of yeast and fungus. Now there's always going to be a certain amount of fungus and yeast and bacteria in the system. And that, that's fine, a healthy organism will have a certain amount, but only about, you know, only, only enough that the, the, the good soldiers, the good bacteria, the good microbes can fend them off. But if, if they can't fend them off because the bad bacteria and yeast are growing so prolifically, then, you know, the organism just it's, it's, a, it's a snowball effect. It's a really, really bad avalanche ready to happen. Um, so this is why things like starches in some women need to be, uh, and sugars, need to be avoided entirely for a period of time if you know that you've been living this way. So it's always a safe bet. I know it's a little bit hardcore, but if you want to make sure you really nip any kind of yeast issue in the butt, in the bud, <laughs> to, um, <laughs> there we go. Um, to uh, do a, what I call a yeast-specific diet um, for a while, which would mean that you do all these things we talk about, but that you limit and possibly eliminate the grains and all sweeteners other than stevia, including fruits and dried fruits, because they'll feed the yeast like crazy. Um, despite, yeah, here we'll see stevia. And this is the brand as well. Um, um, stevia doesn't affect blood sugar at all. It doesn't feed yeast. It's, it's completely neutral in the body. It's actually quite remarkable. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It'll make your green juices taste phenomenal. Yeah, no, st yeah, stevia doesn't uh, do anything to the, it uh, doesn't um, affect the blood at all. It doesn't, uh, yeah. Mm. It comes from the stevia plant. It's totally natural. It's stevia leaf and they, uh, which part of the world? I don't know what it's indigenous to. Um, <laughs> I forget. I think, yeah. Probably right. Probably right. Yeah. So, sorry. You can't. Okay. All right. So yeah, we'll they'll maybe mistake it for marijuana. We grow it in our backyard. Um, it's just stevia. So um, anyway, so that's that's the one caveat with um, with women today when we want to cleanse. It's throwing a lot of fruit and um, and grain into the system, whereas you know, even five or ten years ago, our environment was, wasn't so bad that our systems were so compromised. You could do that and still, you know, see all the great results. In this case, I would, um, I would just caution you to look at, you know, look at where your body is, whether, it, whether you've taken lots of um, birth control, 
um, what your exposure has been to radiation, and then and what your symptoms are. If you're foggy-headed, if you're bloated, if when you eat fruit you bloat up immediately, those are all signs of being yeasted. Just think about bread. You know how it, you know, goes. Wally, those people are yeasted. Those people went too far. <laughs> Um, all right, so um, so those are your star those are your go foods for the starches. Um, things like the corn chips are fine and safe. Um, you have other starches, avocados, of course. Um, avocados are definitely go foods. Um, women are so afraid of avocados because we've been told for decades that they, you know, are so fatty and they just fly through the body. They make an incredibly quick exit. In fact, is there anyone here who speaks Spanish? Okay, aquacarte. Doesn't that mean a water container? Okay, that amazed me. I figured that out. <laughs> so I thought, because it's a water-containing fatty fruit. And because it's water-containing, it doesn't stick in the tissue the way oils will. Um, also, butter, by the way, don't cook with, with oils, but you can cook with a little organic butter. Organic butter is one of those things that just makes everything taste so much better and doesn't make it seem like you're cleansing. Um, organic butter, sea salt, garlic in the, you know, in, the, in the pan, you know, it's what a restaurant does, but it's just better. So... Um, Butter over oil. Yeah, even the finest cold-pressed olive oil will mutate when it's cooked with. So if you want to use oil, drizzle it on top of the vegetables if they're cooked or in a salad, but, you know, don't, um, don't cook with it if you can avoid it. And the coconut, coconut oil is fine. Yes, you can do that. It doesn't mutate. Mm. It smells good, too. <laughs> its cellular structure actually um, changes and becomes hard to digest. Free radicals, yes. Mm. So more, more go foods. Okay, the raw goat's cheese. Um, yeah, raise your hand if you've had this Altadena raw goat's cheese. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, this tastes like just good jack cheese. You would never know it was goat cheese, and, and it's raw. It's brilliant. Um, it's from a dairy in California. And, yeah. Really? Okay, raw, raw goat's cheese. Mm, fantastic, yeah. We, if, and if it's a cheddar-style raw goat's cheese, you can really grate it. And, um, you know, put it over cooked vegetables, again, with like a marinara sauce, make it yummy. And you've got baked ziti without the ziti. It's, but most people, when they say they want pasta, what they really like is the sauce. So you do the, the vegetables smothered in sauce and the goat's cheese melted on top, and trust me, you'll be, you'll be loving life. Yes. Two more questions. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, two more questions. <laughs> yes. So a few things. In terms of, let's, let's, I'm going to go backwards. Let's start with economics. Um, the carrot romaine juice is really reasonable. It, it's quick to make and it's cheap. So if you want to, with the juicing, that's a cheap way to go. Um, in terms of, um, of other economics, eating seasonally will always be cheaper. And, you know, yes, it's best to get organic. But in the meantime, let's just, I, I really believe in getting new habits in place first. So if, you know, if it means that you're going to have it and you have inorganic avocados or inorganic bananas or you really want a watermelon and the organic ones aren't very good and you want a regular watermelon, just do it. Do what's easy right now. And then as you progress, I find that anyone who, who commits themselves to this lifestyle, the doors open up. You find ways around things. It, it all starts to make sense. But just get started and stick with it and be committed. Um, also, just if you can do simple things like, you know, well, baking sweet potatoes and baking acorn squash, organic butter, sea salt, and a salad with an avocado and the sprouted grain bread with butter and honey. That's a cheap dinner, but that will, for most women, that's heaven. You know, they, they would normally go towards something that, you know, is, is maybe a fast food option or something easy, but what they really want is the starch and the sweet and that sort of comfort element, and you can mimic that with these foods. And you'll, you'll wind up wondering why you ever ate anything else. Let me ring. I forgot about that one. Is it now? <laughs> oh, good. I should try that. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, yes. We missed a big one, actually. Thank you. <laughs> fruit. Fruit should not be eaten with any other food. So if you're going to do fruit, do it on an empty stomach. The best way to, the best way to do your day, if you were going to set something up like a, a proper cleanse, just one, one second, um, would be to do your vegetable juice first. Then if you wanted to do fruit and you knew you weren't yeasted and you were happy, to, you, you really wanted to incorporate the fruit, then you can do fruit. So water, do water first. Water, then juice, then fruit, if you want the fruit. And then if you want to do a midday meal of a, a salad with avocado and baked root vegetables or cooked vegetables, if you've been doing the raw thing for a while, I know some of you may be doing that, then you can, you can go all day on raw if you want to. But throw in the cooked vegetables if you're beginning or the sprouted grain bread. You can make yourself an avocado sandwich. Remember we said that you wouldn't want to do a chicken sandwich? But avocado will, will take the place of meat. So you can do avocado, lettuce, tomato sprouts, etc., cetera, um, Dijon mustard. Make it tasty. On the sprouted grain bread, you will be delighted, truly. And uh, you have some of these corn chips with it. Just you know, keep your combinations clean and make sure that the midday meal is highly raw. And that's all you need to worry about. And then afternoon eating, um, ideally either vegetable juice again or, um, or raw vegetables. So you can always nosh on, on plenty of raw vegetables. I know it sounds boring, but we're not talking about carrots and celery. It can be, it can be red bell peppers and cherry tomatoes. And I don't know if that sounds any better to you all, but the, the idea is that it, we, want, we don't want to keep on putting dense stuff into the body. But if you really wanted a cookie, then get a whole grain cookie. Get, you know, when the Kashi, Kashi brand makes a great chocolate chip cookie. So there's always, just find the highest quality item that you can based on what you're desiring to consume. Does that make sense? Mm. Okay, wait, I just want to finish this, but yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So beans and females don't get along that well. You know the saying, beans means good for your heart. Um, there's a reason for that. They're very, they combine starch and protein together, and they're just hard to break down. This is what we're trying to avoid with good food combining. So, um, but the other question was about um, nuts and seeds and dried fruit, and they really should just go with raw salad. So if you wanted to do nuts, dried fruit combinations, like some of these yummy raw treats that are on the market today, do those with a big raw salad, no avocado. They shouldn't go with avocado. And that could gas you up a bit. <laughs> but um, if you keep it combined like that, you'll be fine. That's quite tasty. Yeah. There was a question again. Yeah, I've, I've heard that quite a bit in, the, in my early years in the raw food community. And there's a lot of reasons I've broken free of the raw food community because there are a lot of these um, sort of very fervent religious, um, shall we say, um, yeah, it, it, it's um, this raw carrot juice is so high up on the plane of what's clean for the human body and blood chemistry that um, to look at the minutia of the fact that it's a hybridized um, vegetable well, uh, so is watermelon. I mean, if, if, but remember, if we're do, we're not. Well, I'm not talking about doing just pure carrot juice here. We're saying that we want our bulk of our juice to be all greens, and then we put in the carrot, the beet, these other things to make it palatable, to make it taste good. So if you're, t if we're taking um, one part green juice, you could do it. I mean, certainly you could do it. It's, it's, you know, some people could do it. Other people can't. It kind of depends on who they are. But when I, when I recommend a carrot romaine, right now we've taken something that's originally carrot juice. And now it's a carrot romaine juice. It's a completely different biochemical structure. Yeah, in terms of pure carrot juice, yeah. But I mean, some people find that they do so well when they do just pure carrot juice because that's what they really enjoy drinking. And they drink it and they get better because there's so many enzymes and it's pure alkalinity. So um, I wouldn't look at it with such a myopic, myopic uh, viewpoint. Yeah. Oh, Once again? Okay. It's, you know, do you mind if I answer this real quick? Cause it's, okay, it's a good question. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so two things. Number one is um, this is not a vegan kind of thing that I'm, I'm bringing up here. Um, my program, any program, I don't believe in labels. It's not about being vegan. It's about upgrading the blood chemistry through cleaner foods and elimination. So if you want to include fish, if you want to include the raw goat's cheese, feel free. But know this. All cooked animal protein is a damaged protein. And it carries the vibration of death from the animal. 
So we don't, in, in the larger scheme of things, when you, when you grow, when you, when you start to, to do this at a deeper level and you start to see the physical manifestations of this work, you'll get clear enough that when you start to eat things that are, you know, that have the, <laughs> the vibration of, of death in them, you'll feel it. So, I, I mean, I'll now and then have a bite of fish. I'm not some sort of pure, you know, thing here. But, um, but I, do, I do believe that it's a, a deteriorating factor. I don't, I would never eat a piece of fish and think, this is, I'm eating this for my health. It's more like, I'm eating it for my indulgence. There's a big difference. But in the case of people transitioning, it's not for pure indulgence. It's because they need to provide a little bit of the poison that was in their diet before. Otherwise, the diet's going to be too clean, and the body's going to go berserk because it's too clean. So, um, so that's the one thing with protein. Don't, don't be fooled into thinking that it's healthy for you, but it's something that's important to throw in as you're transitioning, and it makes it easy to go to social functions, and emotionally it might feel better to just know you can have it. Um, but I wouldn't do uh, chicken and, um, and meats, especially that are not um, grass-fed organic, because um, they're carrying lots of hormones and antibiotics, and even if you're not taking them, you're eating them. So as those go into your bloodstream, that's bad news. It's okay, it's okay. Let's, let's, let's continue um, next month. <laughs> okay, we talk about pregnancy. Thank you all so much. Okay, thanks.